Mathieu van der Poel just went on a total rampage to win his first race of 2024 at the so-called Mini Tour of Flanders, with a 43-kilometre-long solo escape nobody could match, not even his biggest rival, Wout van Aert. The race was so tough, he crashed at the exact section where van der Poel attacked and there was no catching him afterwards. So here's how MVDP completely annihilated Van Aert and all the other riders at the E3 Saxo Classic. See, Mathieu van der Poel unleashed a massive burst of power on the cobbled Paterberg Hill and quickly left the rest of the peloton far behind. He maintained his lead until the finish line, securing his first ever victory at the E3 Saxo Classic with the biggest winning margin in 40 years. Van der Poel's biggest rival and the previous E3 champion, Wout van Aert, crashed when van der Poel launched his attack 43 kilometers from the finish. Despite the setback, van Aert got back on his bike and chased after van der Poel on his own without any other riders nearby. However, it was too much. He couldn't go, the distance and the blasting wind mixed with pouring rain didn't help either. The leader of the Visma Lisa bike team lost his power in the last 15 kilometers and was caught by Jasper Steven from Lidl Trek, who outsprinted him in the final meters, stealing the second place. And just like that, Van Aert had to be satisfied with the lowest podium spot, which wasn't what he was hoping for, but still a remarkable achievement considering what he went through. But mind you, while Van der Poel was able to capitalize on Van Aert's unlucky crash, his victory was still hard earned. Fresh from serving as the MVP for Jasper Philipson at Milan San Remo, Mathieu van der Poel made over half a dozen attacks before making his decisive move at the Mini Tour of Flanders. After the race, he said, I'm super happy. I didn't really expect this. I thought I would need a few more races to get to this level. I hope to recover from this in time for Sunday because I was pretty cooked at the end. This one wasn't on my list of victories yet. So I'm super happy to win it, especially the way I won it. I think we can be really proud as a team with this victory. Van der Poel was dominant in his second road race of the season, and he set a high standard for his upcoming races, including Hent Wevelhem, which didn't necessarily go as planned for him, but that's a story for another day. Van der Poel was determined during the latter part of the 210km E3 race. He launched several attacks in a chaotic period of racing where many riders, including Julian Alaphilippe, from Sudol Quickstep and a strong group from Lidl Trek were aggressively pushing the pace. But the race took a dramatic turn when Van Aert crashed at the bottom of the Paterberg with 43 kilometers left. His wheel got stuck on the curb, causing him to slowly get back on his bike at the foot of the steep climb, pretty much exactly at the point where you don't want to crash. After the race, he admitted, the crash changed everything for me. Later on, it was a long chase, which was not successful. It was kind of a stupid crash and very unfortunate for the rest of the race, but that's how it is. Only a split second after Van Aert's fall, Van der Poel pushed hard on the pedals and raced up the cobblestone hill. He quickly passed Lascano, who seemed to be taking a leisurely ride, and surged ahead with a lead of over 25 seconds, which seemed like a clear victory already. However, Van Aert did quickly recover and broke away from the group chasing Van der Poel, though. After training at high altitude for three weeks, he pushed hard against the wind, reducing van der Poel's lead to less than 15 seconds at one point. For a moment, it seemed like Van Aert might catch up to van der Poel for an Oscar-worthy finish of the race. However, van der Poel had more left in the tank, while Van Aert seemed to run out of steam in the last 15 kilometers. Van der Poel stayed strong, while Van Aert ran out of gas completely with six kilometers left, allowing Stuyven to overtake him for second place. Van Aert said, I hit the cobbles quite hard on my right side, and after the race I started to feel some pain. I'll definitely need a medical check. After the race, Van der Poel already got ready for Sunday's Hent Wevelhem, where he teamed up with the reigning San Remo champion Philipson, and everyone thought Alpecin would be in the driver's seat. Back then, he said, Hent Wevelhem isn't on my list yet, and with Jasper we have two guys who are favourite. Let's hope we can have another win with the team. But as we know by now, that didn't age well since none of the Alpecin riders managed to pull it off. In the end, Mads Pedersen managed to outsprint van der Poel and took home the victory. But despite all that, it was obvious that van der Poel's attacks hurt van Aert a lot. He literally demolished the Visma rider with his continuous attacks and constant pressure. Finishing third didn't ease the disappointment for Van Aert, who obviously needed time to recover from both the physical and mental impact of his crash on the Paterberg, which ruined his chances of winning. After the race, he commented, As we can see, Mathieu is super strong. He really hurt me with his attacks today. 
As a team, we had an unfortunate day too. I was trying to cover the attacks from Mathieu. It worked out well until I crashed on the Paterberg. It was a very hard race. As always, the race kicked off from far out. Our team was unlucky. We preferred to get some guys in front while I tried to follow Mathieu and the other favourites. That part went well up until that point, but we were unable to play out a numerical advantage. Per and some others were involved in an early crash. Van Baal punctured untimely. Everybody has his story, but it clearly wasn't going our way. With 44 kilometres to go, the main group of top riders was closing in on some riders from an earlier breakaway when Van der Poel surged ahead toward the base of the short but steep Paterberg climb. The climb has a cobbled section with a gutter. That's the best path to take, and that's where it can become chaotic. Reflecting on the crash and the time he needed to recover after Van der Poel blasted away in front, Van Aert said, it was a stupid mistake for myself. It changed the whole race for me. I think Kung was in front of me. I wanted to pass him by, hopping on the cobbles. I crashed. It was very stupid. The cobbles were a bit wet, but that's not an excuse. It was a blunder. While Van Aert was saying this, his lips were visibly blue from the cold, despite of the warmth coming from the small interview box. This just showed how tough the conditions really were, not just for him, but for everyone. The last part of the race was wet because of the rain, and afterward, the riders were visibly destroyed. We still must talk about how Van Aert managed to come back from his crash, though. When Van Aert caught up with the chasing group, Van der Poel was already ahead by more than 30 seconds, and they were approaching the 2.2-kilometre-long Quarimont climb. In Wout's words, his experience was as follows. I came closer on the Quarimont. After cresting the top of the Quarimont, I had to decide whether to try it or wait for the group with Matteo. I felt good and thought I had to try and bridge across in one big move. The turning point came 32 kilometres from the finish. I think Mathieu increased his effort there and I started losing time again. It was worth the try, but he was the strongest. From that point on, the gap just kept on growing and growing, from only 10 seconds to half a minute. In the final kilometres, the gap was close to two minutes. Van Aert said, I was able to maintain my pace from there, but in the final kilometres, I was empty. His hip was obviously hurting when he was saying that. That's also why, after the race, he said, I'm certainly not racing Hent Wevel Hem. I'll rest a few days, and in Dwarsdor Vlanderen, I'll be back at the start line. And by the time this video is published, the results of that race will already be known, and it's already known how well Van Aert was able to recover from his crash. Without Mathieu van der Poel in the race, everyone will be watching Wout van Aert. He wants to show his strength before the Tour of Flanders. His E3 Saxo Classic could have gone better if he hadn't crashed on the Paterberg, which forced him to compete for a podium spot instead of fighting for the win.